a thread by Josh Denny. I've always liked Jim Gaffigan. I've never met him. I don't agree with everything he said in his rant this past week, but I'll defend his right to say it. Here's my problem. When this happens, though, I'm going to tweet my thoughts. So strap in. Context, Jim Gaffigan doesn't like Trump. There's this weird sentiment that what he did was a risk, that somehow he hurt his career, which isn't true or possible, and that what he did was brave, and that it was difficult for anyone to do. I find myself angered that anyone sees it this way. There is no persecution for someone espousing the views that Jim shared. Sure, you'll see a bunch of nobodies or bots or fringe white right-wing people denouncing their fandom, but overall, you will see overwhelming support from celebs and tastemakers the industry over. The whole post on his Facebook page makes me sick because these are the stories that lead to the narrative that cancel culture isn't real. People use examples when highly successful celebrities step on a ledge to lose a few fans for a mostly widely accepted point of view. Anyone can step on a ledge, say something that's widely agreed upon, and pretend it's a risk and be lauded as a hero. And guess what? I'm fine with that. But some of us lose everything trying to do the same thing, standing up for what we believe in, for what we think is right. And we're not millionaires. And we're not saying the popular thing. Some of us just believe that all racism is bad and that we have to stop allowing it to be directed at white people. Like that's progress, it's not. It's just tribal disgust turned on its head. It's eye for an eye treatment, it's not progress. Yet, when people like myself in 2018 or Terry Crews say unpopular or risky things to get this point across, we're mocked, run out of the business, and called risky or toxic. And those labels stick. When I was canceled two years ago, I received dozens of messages of support from A-listers I had never met, but zero of it publicly. It was all private. In public, Everyone agreed I was probably just some racist that deserves what he got. My girlfriend and I had even gotten close with a couple. Husband was a prominent child actor in the 90s. We were friends. We had couples nights. We would go over to their house, make food, hang with their kids. We met because he loved my no-holds-barred sense of humor on Twitter. He abandoned us entirely and outright because of what happened to me. No more friendship, no more hangouts. An association with me wasn't worth any possible heat he could get for it. That sucks. But those are the breaks of Hollywood, right? I don't know what I want from this thread. I guess I'm furious that a dude worth a hundred million bucks or so thinks he risks what a guy like me risks when he speaks out. No millionaires had my back. No millionaires reached out to support me. And I know quite a few. And it's that feeling that unites people on the right. The idea that the we're all free to be what we want just doesn't fucking apply to us. There's no standard for behavior, for how we are treated, unless we just agree with you. So we revolt. We aren't unified under Trump's lies. We don't care about him as a figurehead. We are unified in that you guys want an America that is okay leaving us behind in your pursuit of your vision for this country. Guess what? We're not going anywhere. Name one conservative celebrity in Hollywood that is still respected and gets work, that isn't mocked incessantly by every other talking head. Go ahead, I'll wait. Being a conservative in this industry today is like being gay in the 50s. You'd rather kill yourself than be outed. And you motherfuckers love it like that. So spare me the, we're the party of compassion. You're not. You're the party of comply or die. You know that's the fascism you constantly accuse Trump of, right? I've said this several times. It's insanely cowardly 
to ride the First Amendment to Money Town and then close the door behind you for those that don't agree with you. My ideas aren't even that radical. I want a small government. I want, the le I want to be left alone. I want to rid us of corruption. And yes, I think we should think about laws and their purpose, and maybe that means we don't justify murdering babies for the convenience of women. This is too many tweets. But here are my final thoughts. I just want, just once, love to see celebrities that have profited from free speech grow some fucking balls and defend one person's right to a conservative opinion. Just one. You want an America where we're all free? Publicly back someone that disagrees with you. Have some fucking balls. Stop expecting a trophy for saying the popular shit everyone agrees with. You want a better country? Risk something to reach across the ideological aisle. Until then, you leave us no choice but to band together and fight you. To best your ideas with ours. You've left us no choice. You've made it clear there's no room for us in your America. So... If we have to stand on your dreams to reach ours, so fucking be it. You made the rules. And rant. P.S. I'm voting for Trump because your candidate sucks as bad as the last one. He's proof you don't have to fight for your beliefs. You think you're so right that he can literally be asleep at the wheel. You're wrong. You'll see in November. Amazing. This thread has been commented on, shared, liked, and retweeted over 40,000 times, and it's nowhere near the Twitter trends. Yet there's still no bias against conservatives. Right, Jack? <laughs>